something I generally really try to avoid is taking on multiple projects at the same time. But unfortunately, I find myself in a little bit of a situation where I've started one project, the door handle issue on the Z. Turns out that the door handle is in really rough shape internally, and we just got to get a new one. So I've ordered it. It's not going to be here for a few days. So the door's all taken apart. And uh, I guess we got to move on to something else. So I have a few things that I need to do on this car yet. For starters, we have plenum space here. I want to get done. I want to paint the upper manifold, get that looking nice, do some engine bay cleanup stuff. Maybe want to do a different intake. I just don't like the K&N one. There's no support here and it just, you know, I have it zip tied. Um, we have upper control arms to do in the front of the car. We have a noise that this car is making. So I'm not sure if that's sway bar bushings or what that is under the car. So we're going to address that when we do the adjustable control arms. We have the rear diff bushing. Uh, I'm gonna do subframe collars, rear subframe collars as well. So we got a lot of stuff going on with the car. Uh, I'm gonna just, I think I'm, I'm just gonna dive in. We'll see what the hell happens. Still looking super clean under here. Pretty pumped about that. Such a simple little project, but it made a huge difference under here, just painting the subframe a nice gloss black, painting the rear diff, housing and cover gloss black looks so sharp. I'm going to try to remove the rear diff without dropping the exhaust and without taking the rear sway bar out of here. Just, you know, I'm lazy. Keep it as simple as possible, but it's much easier than the Q50 was. There's so much to take out of the Q50 to do the rear diff pushing. So you can see this one uh, failed a long time ago. I did the old polyurethane filler trick for a while, but I'm still getting wheel hop and we just, we got to change it out and sub and uh, Z1 hooked me up with the rear diff bushing kit. So we're going to make use of it. This is under here. So I'll remove the, the Bell Race Works rear diff brace. I might upgrade to the Z1 diff brace. I like the idea to, of being able to jack the car up by the brace. I think that's cool, but we'll remove the axles here. I love how the, the Zs have the stub axles. That makes it so handy. The Q, you have to pull the splines out of, out of the uh, rear diff itself, which kind of blows. So this should be, fingers crossed, a lot easier project than the one we had to tackle with the Q50. I was really hoping I could drop the whole diff without 
removing the sway bar, but it looks like we're gonna have to do it at least at the bracket so it can sag a little bit. I can reach this bolt here holding the diff up, but I can't reach this one. The sway bar is in the way, so <sighs> damn it. Could definitely get to that one. I think I can get to that one now. Lubed them up a bit. We'll see what we can do. 17. sensors 12 doesn't look too bad. I actually just want to clean it up a little bit. I'm not too worried about the top side, but I do want to get the underside and just paint it so it matches the cover. We'll obviously get the top half <laughs> of the diff cover now. Uh, this time around, um, we're going to pop these uh, bushings out, put the new ones in, and then we'll get to work on the diff, the rear diff bushing itself in the frame of the Z. Uh, but we'll clean, on this, clean this up a little bit first, and then we'll, we'll tackle tearing that old one out of there. It's going to be a nightmare, I know it. Ideally, you would drain your diff first. I just plug the port, try to prevent too much loss of fluid. You gotta do it from the underside, so you gotta rotate this upside down. Then, you have a, I think it's like a yeah, 34 millimeter socket, which fits the little bushing pretty well, and you just gotta pound the shit out of it till they pop out.
I knew this was going to be a nightmare. And if this little front bushing is any indication of how the rear bushing is going to go, I am not looking forward to it. It's like seized in there. I've heated it, WD'd it, knockers loosed it, a breaker or whatever the hell other liquid we got to try to break this stuff loose. And the metal sleeve is really seized in there. So broke a screwdriver, I'm rolling the edges down, I'm using my sockets. I'm just beating the hell out of it. Trying not to break anything, but uh, we're making progress. We'll get it out of there. Ah, oh, finally. Damn. She was locked in there tight. Got her out without much damage. Nicked the edge here once or twice. No big deal. Clean that up, get the new bushing in there, clean everything up, and then we'll head to the rear. recessed portion goes on the underside you discard the factory washers all the factory washers use the new one and that's where it allows that new washer to go this is upside down remember so recessed and washer on the underside of the diff So we're getting to, ready to use the rear diff bushing removal tool. There's a bunch of little pieces here and it can be a little bit maybe overwhelming to figure out what the hell everything is for. But I think if you actually uh, think about it a little bit, it becomes quite clear. So I should say this is a 22 millimeter. This is a 32 millimeter. crunching in there now. We are definitely making progress, but this is a bitch. Too easy. I feel like we might have it. It's gotta be. It's gotta be it. See it's tapered on one end. I believe this end goes in from the front side of the car. So it's tapered to allow you to push it in there a little bit easier. Then you can slide the sleeve through. Like that. And that's what you'd see from the back side of your car. I'm 
exactly sure how far back in it's supposed to come, but slid in pretty nicely. A little rubber mallet helped move it along. Well, I don't want to lie and tell you that that was easy, but comparing it to the rear diff bushing removal and reinstallation process for the Q50, anything is a breeze compared to that. So uh, not too bad. We got the new bushing in. It looks really good out of there. Did a little bit of touch up on the subframe with some black paint. Now we're gonna put that rear diff back in the car. Well guys, I wish I could say that that's all there is to it, but I can't. It's a little bit of a tedious job, a little bit frustrating. Uh, you're gonna get some dirty hands uh, and you're gonna get a little bit frustrated and you probably have some sore muscles when it's all over, especially if you're doing it on your back on the garage floor like I did. But it is well worth the upgrade. It makes the car feel completely different. No weird noises, no nothing of concern at this point, but the car feels much more planted and solid. I'm sorry, I don't have the review. Uh, included in this video, but I will in a video coming up very, very shortly. We'll get some undercar footage. I'll make sure to show you exactly what the rear diff bushing is doing now, uh, but it does make the car feel completely different. You really don't know what you're missing until you get a nice upgraded rear diff bushing set, uh, front and rear. So it makes a huge difference. Can't wait to get some uh, subframe uh, bushing collars on this thing. It's going to really completely change how this car feels and I'm, I'm pumped. There's a lot more coming for the 350Z, more stuff coming for all the cars on the channel. So I hope you guys will follow along. Uh, if you have any questions about this process, let me know in the comments below. I'll get to them as quickly as I possibly can. I will say one bit of advice is to get that removal tool. Uh, it makes a world of difference. Check out my Q50 rear diff bushing project. Uh, without a tool available for that car, it is a nightmare. Uh, it can be done on this car as well, but since the tool is there, take full advantage of it. It's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of frustration. Um, but I'll put links in the description below uh, to Z1 Motorsports rear diff bushing for this one. You can do the solid one. I recommend the poly. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more of a comfortable ride, reduces the vibration and the extra noises that you don't want to hear, especially if you drive the car on a regular basis. So again, if you have any questions, leave them below. I appreciate you guys watching this video. More stuff coming for the channel. So I hope you guys will stick around, hit the little bell notification so you don't miss out. Thanks again. See you in the next one.